Greetings everyone and welcome to episode 50. Uh, when I started this little venture, I never imagined that I would produce 50 videos over the course of a little more than a year. The, uh, the T72 is nearly done and uh, all that remains to do is uh, to add a few stowage items and uh, this is something I'll be covering in this video. Now, I do apologize, this is quite a lengthy video but you'll notice there's quite a lot to do. First, I'll be assembling and painting various stowage items, some of them from two mini art uh, detail kits. I'll be printing and detailing a flag, I'll show you how I did that. I'll be uh, scratch building and detailing a rolled carpet, and in this I'll be using some uh, milliput putty. And uh, finally, I'll be using the same putty to uh, detail some sandbags for the front of the T72. Guys, please do bear with me when I did this. Um, I built these things out of out of sequence and uh, consequently you might notice some continuity issues however do bear with me uh, i'll be focusing on the uh, the methods and the techniques that i used uh, to do all this this of course is a sponsored build so first let's hear from the sponsor The uh, T72M from Dustwerk is a beautiful kit that is available from Supernova Studio, my favorite hobby shop, so do head on over to their, to their website. And of course, I'll be giving you a promo code later on. Now this reference image, I believe this could be from the recent Syrian conflict, was very handy for the, uh, for the stowage portion of this build. You'll notice the wooden crates on the back as well as a rolled carpet and of course the flag and that is something I'll uh, be doing in this video. I use some parts from two mini art kits, the first being wooden boxes and crates. I'm a big fan of mini art and uh, you'll notice the lovely uh, wooden detail uh, on, these, uh, on these crates, these have been assembled, certainly a joy to work with. I also used a uh, patio chair from the street uh, fruit shop kit. From, uh, from Mini Art, beautifully molded as a single piece. And uh, it was really funny when I posted this on Instagram, it seems that everybody in the world at some point sat in one of these chairs. So it's really a, a, uh, a global phenomenon, if you wish. There we go, guys. That's all the, uh, all the stowage items, some of them from Mini Art, some of them from the, from the spares box. First step, as always, is to apply a good primer. For this, I used Mr. Hobby. And uh, you can see there the, uh, the detail, the wooden texture on those boxes. That's really lovely. Next up is some pre-shading. You've seen me uh, do this before, a technique that's well known to aircraft modelers, basically adding uh, white and black contrasting uh, colors to the item before we apply the base color. Also did the same for the patio chair. Just to highlight some of the uh, some of the portions of that chair before the uh, main color goes on. There we go. Those are the crates, and these are now ready to take the uh, the wooden base color. The base color for the chair is white gray from Vallejo, and this is very. Uh, carefully now applied with the airbrush, taking care not to kill that pre-shading. For the crates, I used Vallejo wood for the, uh, for the base color. And again, this is carefully sprayed onto the part uh, in layers, building up the, uh, the color gradually so as to not kill the, uh, the pre-shading. Next up for the crates, I used this filter from MIG Productions. And uh, really in this case, I'm using this filter much like you would use a wash. And uh, because of that beautiful molded detail, the, uh, the wash color is doing a lot of work there just to bring out that wood grain. Something that would normally take some other stencil or some, uh, some work with oil. So you can see the result. All that remains is to uh, do some outlines with, uh, with black. And uh, that is what you're seeing on your screen at the moment. Final step is to use German uh, camouflage beige and just to uh, dry brush the, uh, the edges just to add some further 
contrast uh, to that part. And really this just um, does a lot to, uh, to, to bring out the realism in that part. Next, I'm going to start prepping some of the, uh, the metal parts. In this case, I'm using dark aluminium from Alclad. And uh, this is now sprayed onto the jerry can, as well as the little kettle that I also plan to, to add as stowage. To detail the kettle, I'm using transparent blue and brass. And this is now carefully applied to the bottom of that kettle, just to simulate that typical burnt metal uh, color that one would see on a well-used uh, metal uh, kettle or pot. The blue is also in there. If a piece of metal has been repeatedly heated, you will notice some, uh, some blue in the color. That's what I'm adding there. Gradually building up the color. And then finally, smoke. This is a very useful color from Vallejo. This is airbrushed to the very bottom of the kettle, uh, where uh, the, uh, the heat and the soot would have uh, accumulated. And that's what I'm adding there with the uh, my water airbrush, carefully adding that to the bottom of the kettle. There you go. That is the result. Certainly happy with that. Guys, for the chipping on the uh, on the jerry can, I covered that in a previous episode, basically using Vallejo chipping medium, and uh, finally also adding some uh, some random uh, rust to the uh, to the jerry can itself, just to make it look old and worn. A nice touch is to use some uh, engine, some petrol uh, petrol spill from from Vallejo, and uh, just around the cap, some of the uh, the spilled fuel. That would have left uh, some marks there. I'm also adding the same to the uh, to the external fuel tank at the back of the T72. Uh, some of the uh, spilled fuel that one would typically see on a vehicle like this. While I had the uh, the smoke color loaded into my airbrush, I also started adding some detail to the exhaust portion of the T72. And in reference pictures, and uh, in reference pictures, you can see there is a lot of uh, smoky residue. Uh, around the exhaust outlet guys and that's it that is the uh, the detailing done on these uh, these parts and they are ready to go onto the tank i'm certainly happy with that especially the uh, the wood grain on those two uh, wooden crates loving that detail next i want to add the rolled carpet that we saw earlier in the uh, reference picture as well as the flag and for this i first need to measure uh, make sure I've got the correct measurements. We now jump into Photoshop. This is an older version of Photoshop. And uh, basically what I do here is uh, to open a new document, A4 size in this case, because this is what I'll be printing. And uh, of course, we also need to give it a name. In this case, I'm calling it Iraqi flag. Once I have this page uh, set up, I need to uh, get the correct size. Uh, on, on my document for this I first reset the, uh, the zero point and then I, I use rulers uh, in the application uh, just to make sure that uh, I've got the, uh, the correct measurements for the flag as well as the carpet uh, on my document. I now drag these uh, images that I downloaded from the internet, the flag itself, uh, onto the, uh, the document. Of course, for the flag, you will need both the back and the front side. And uh, the, uh, the carpet is now also uh, added to this document in a similar fashion. Now to test whether my uh, measurements are correct, I first print out a uh, ordinary black and white uh, copy of this on my printer. And uh, these are now cut from the, from the sheet. There we go, paper copy, both the flag and the, uh, and the carpet. And you can see there you will need both the front and the back of the flag. This is folded in half, leaving that little bit of white there where it will uh, attach to the, uh, to the antenna. And this can now be folded. This is basically what I'll be doing later on with the full color printed copy. There we go, more or less that's the idea. Size certainly looks correct. I uh, check the carpet in the same manner making sure that my measurements are correct. It'll fit there, more or less. That looks correct. Next, I'll be using Milliput. Now, I have to uh, admit, I'm very late to the Milliput party. There's a lot of modelers that use this to a great effect 
to do sculpt parts for their builds. This is, of course, a two-part epoxy putty product. Um, it contains the, uh, the epoxy portion as well as the hardener. And uh, to use this, you, you use equal amounts of the hardener and the epoxy. This is then mixed, basically uh, kneaded together. And uh, you want to produce a clay from which you can uh, then start sculpting your products, your, your parts. And uh, again, I'm going to use my paper print that I did earlier just to make sure that the, uh, the size is correct. And once I have this little flat section of uh, millipit, and start rolling my carpet. In this case I'm using the super fine textured uh, millipet. There you go, that's the, the carpet has been rolled. I now shape this uh, across the, uh, the back of the turret because of a little thing called gravity. The sides of that carpet will uh, sag down. And uh, this will be tied on with rope. So uh, while the millipet is still uh, not cured, I can add those rope marks. And there you go, setting this aside to, to dry. Now the nice thing about Millipit of course is that it dries rock hard and uh, once this is done it can also be sanded and uh, shaped like any other uh, the resin product basically. There we go, sanding it smooth, getting rid of all those finger marks that I might have added uh, while working with this. Next up I'll need a primer and for this I'm using uh, Earth Green from Vallejo. This is airbrushed onto the dried millipit uh, just as I would do with any other resin part. I also use a gloss varnish uh, because I'll be adding decals later. With this done and with my measurements correct I can now print out uh, color copies uh, of my uh, Photoshop design on both uh, ordinary paper as well as decal paper. And that's what you're seeing on your screen right now. Now the carpet, uh, I'm going to use the, uh, the decal paper. This was printed on clear decal paper. And uh, because this is a decal, I'll be using micro set and micro sole, something I'll be familiar to most modelers. The uh, surface is first prepared with micro set and uh, when this is done, I can start adding the decal. Now this is uh, tricky work initially. I'm not going to use the entire carpet. Uh, first, just roll this onto the uh, the millipit, making sure to get all those uh, those folds out. And uh, this is, of course, where micro sole is uh, very useful to have because it'll allow that uh, that decal to. Uh, take to the shape of the millipet uh, carpet itself. You can see on your screen there uh, the way I uh, shaped this into position. To finish the carpet I'm going to use uh, German camouflage beige and this is now used to dry brush the edges of the roll carpet just to accentuate those, uh, those edges. Guys and there we go that is the carpet in position as well as the little kettle I'm uh, certainly liking the look of this and it's quite close to the uh, reference image as well and nice little added detail. Now the flag. In this case I used um, the ordinary office printer paper and uh, once the flag has been cut out it's uh, folded in half with the back and the front uh, visible. You need that little white portion at the side there just to attach it to your to your antenna. There's a little flag, it's on the antenna and uh, next up I want to shape this, just to add some little realism to, to that uh, similar to what I'm seeing in my reference pictures. For this I'm using ultra glue and ordinary tap water. Basically what I do is to uh, take some, uh, some ultra glue and uh, mix it with water, thin it with water and uh, with this mixture done, I can now uh, take my paper flag, dip it in this, make sure it's uh, completely soaked with, uh, with the glue mixture, and uh, then I can start shaping it. Now guys, I want to encourage you to print out more than one copy of the flag. As you can see, my first attempt was not, not successful. Uh, the flag was in the water too long and it basically tore. So in this case, I ended up making uh, three flags. The first one tore, of course, and uh, the second ones were more successful. I put them in front of a fan just so the, uh, the glue could dry. And this was the one I chose. 
loving the look of, uh, of that flag, the way it uh, it's draped on the antenna, and this is ready to go onto the T72. There you can see the result, and uh, I'm loving the uh, the added realism that just uh, adds to the entire bolt. Easy to do. Next, I wanted to add some sandbags, similar to what I'm seeing in this reference picture. Now, this is really something that's been done uh, by generations of tankers throughout history, dating back as early as the, as the Second World War. Uh, tankers would add uh, sandbags to the front and sides of their tanks, just to add a little bit uh, extra protection, and especially in the case of the T-72, where the frontal armor was uh, very thin, very substandard. Uh, the smart Iraqi tankers need to uh, just to beef up that uh, protection a little bit. Again, I'm going to use Milliput. In this case, I use the standard variety. And uh, this is really a technique that is well known to most modelers. First, uh, roll this into a uh, sausage and then start cutting uh, sections of that. Shape it into the rough shape of a sandbag. Here I'm using uh, my sculpting tool just to add that uh, that open section that's been sewn shut and I'll also add the seam at the side. Next I'm using an old T strainer uh, just to add some texture to the outside of that bag. These would typically be made from hessian or some other uh, canvas, heavy duty canvas type. Once the sandbags are ready, I can start uh, positioning them on the front of the tank while the uh, putty is still uncured. With this done, I can apply the, uh, the primer. That's what you're seeing on your screen right now. And uh, just as with all my other parts, I choose to uh, appreciate this, first using white. And uh, once this is done, I can use a uh, khaki, which my American friends would say khaki and uh, this is now sprayed onto the sandbags. Again, taking care not to kill that pre-shading. Next, I'm going to use a filter. I certainly like these, uh, these filters. And uh, this is now applied to the sandbags and the, uh, the dark brown will of course now fill up all those seams as well as the surface uh, texture, giving us a very nice wash uh, effect on those parts. Final step is to use some uh, some German camouflage beige and just dry brush the edges. And there you can see the result. I'm certainly very happy with this. Uh, nicely sculpted uh, sandbags. These are now glued onto the tank using ultra glue from Ammo Mick. Of course, the ultra glue will dry completely transparent and uh, leave no visible glue marks on the tank. Guys, and here you can see that is the, the current state of progress. The sandbags have been added, all the other stowage items. You'll notice there's a figure, a driver figure in there visible as well. Figures is something I'll be uh, covering in a future video. I used a very nice kit uh, also from Mini Art Middle Eastern uh, tankers. And uh, this is also something I'll be adding to the build. The T72 itself is basically done and uh, Next up, I can start uh, looking at planning the diorama and start assembling that. Guys, as you will know by now, the, uh, the T72M from, uh, from Das Werk is available uh, from Supernova Studio. If you use the promo code off the sprue, you'll be getting a substantial discount. And this is for South African uh, modelers. On your screen right now are all the, uh, the, the paint colors that I used as well as the, uh, those two kits from Mini Art and the, uh, the Millipit available from all good hobby shops. Guys, this is it for the 50th video and uh, in the next one I'll be looking at uh, planning a diorama as well as finishing those figures. Hope to see you soon in the next video.